Hey everybody, and welcome to Dirt Rally. Uh, we are going to uh, mess around with this game a little bit. Uh, I have played a ever so slight small bit of it uh, prior to this, uh, and I'm just uh, kind of jumping in to try to see if uh, the game is uh, going to be a, in the contention for Game of the Year. Uh, I just decided that I would make a video uh, for this rather than just doing it on my own. It's a little uh, inside baseball, a little behind the scenes of how um, of how I go about uh, looking for uh, Game of the Year contenders, uh, at least at this time of the year. Um, you know, uh, games come out all year and unlike a lot of uh, game reviewers and video game sites, uh, that don't seem to have any kind of memory. Um, <laughs> I'm not just picking stuff that came out within the last three months or the last six months. Um, you know, there's a whole year of games out there to choose from. Uh, I will say that uh, this game is set at the lowest difficulty setting. Um, this is the very first championship. Um, it's freaking hard. I would say that this is uh, one of the hardest driving games I've ever played. Uh, and I've played the entire Dirt series, uh, all the way from Dirt 1 onward. Um, I love the Dirt series. The Dirt series is by far one of my favorite franchises in video games. Not just, uh, you know, not just racing games, but in video games uh, totally. And um, Dirt Rally was on sale earlier this year. And my intention originally was to wait and pick it up on PC because it seemed like they were um, tuning the game and everything else purely for PC. Uh, and they weren't very concerned with consoles. Uh, but what it turned out was that, you know, they just needed money. Uh, early access, that kind of stuff. They, they didn't think that anybody was really interested in this type of game anymore. So they were like, well, you know, let's see how it goes and uh, move along. Oh, uh, one thing I should mention is that the uh, co-driver, his voice is actually coming out of the controller. Uh, so you can't hear that. Um, unfortunately, the sound in this game, <coughs> at, pardon me, coming through the capture unit was incredibly soft. Uh, to the point where you couldn't hear it like at all. Uh, so I, I apologize for that. Um, again, the co-driver uh, is coming out of the controller, so you can't hear that. And then the sound effects uh, and the music and everything were so soft that it just it just won't pick it up. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, it's nothing you know, uh, crazy, earth-shattering, unique. Uh, so you know, uh, sorry about that. But that's just how it, how it worked out. Uh, anyway, uh, so like I was saying, the uh, Dirt series, they were uh, kind of focusing more on PC because they thought that, you know, if they had a market, they probably had it on PC because a lot of uh, Europeans uh, actually are really, really into um, racing games, as you may or may not know, and they are very much into rally sport. Um, there's a fair number of Americans that are in a rally sport too. I am, I am in a rally sport personally, but uh, it seems like regionally speaking it seems like the uh, the Europeans are, are probably up there in the top five of the most uh, you know diehard fans of this type of game um, so they were they, they kind of thought well okay we're just gonna put it on PC see how it goes you know they had early access they had a lot of good stuff on the PC they, they really listened to uh, fan um, fan feedback and everything else and you know the game was was a big success and it was beautiful on PC um, it looks really good here too but uh, I think that we're definitely losing some stuff not being on PC um, I play all these games from the third person uh, whether I'm playing uh, Forza or I'm playing uh, Dirt or uh, you know Grid or Need for Speed or any of those games uh, I don't like first person um, in these games, uh, especially a game where the uh, handling has to be very, very precise. Uh, I have a, I, I don't feel like I have a good enough sense of the world around me 
um, when I'm playing in first person. And, and sometimes the cars you're driving uh, in first person, the hood, it has, it, its view is obscured in different ways, and therefore it makes it much more difficult to, uh, to play. Uh, not that that is sometimes a bad thing. Sometimes that challenge is, is wonderful, and I have uh, experimented in, in previous Dirt games uh, with that uh, perspective, but uh, you know I'm not that good, so uh, I tend to fall back to my third-person driving roots and uh, and go for it there. Um, this game I was struggling uh, a lot, uh, struggling just to stay on the track. Um, <laughs> I, I think that the handling model uh, for this game is probably very realistic. And as it's not something that I, at least I'm aware of, that you can uh, change in the championship mode, um, it makes it uh, quite a quite a big challenge. And also, uh, I don't normally play racing games with the damage model enabled, and uh, it appears that there's no way to disable the damage model, at least in the championship mode. Now, all of this, may, I might be wrong about all this, and there might be deep in the options a way to do these things. Um, but it wasn't something that was presented to me as an option uh, when I was playing. So I just played on, uh, they did give me the option for change of difficulty, which I did, um, but then that was it. Uh, so I just started on the first championship and moved on. Um, I did, uh, previous to this, you'll see uh, at the very end, I believe, of this video, you will see a hill climb that I started in a custom event and the video, the uh, segment after this segment, you will see a rally cross uh, that I uh, that I played in the uh, custom events. Uh, I did those because I wanted to show everybody what those are like, and I also wanted to play them so that I knew what they were like. Um, unfortunately, I <laughs> I'm so terrible at them that uh, I'm not sure that I do know what they're like. For the record, this is a game I own, uh, a game that I purchased. Uh, it is running on the PlayStation 4, a regular old PlayStation 4, not a pro PlayStation uh, Pro or anything. Um, so it is a game that I will spend time on eventually uh, because I do own it. Uh, so it is something that I will be revisiting later. Um, but uh, unfortunately, similarly to Dishonored 2, uh, the challenge of the game is a little too high for me to just dip into it and play it for a little while and then dip out and feel like I've gotten a good um, representation of how good or bad the game is. Um, so therefore, uh, I, don't, I don't feel qualified to uh, determine whether this is a good game of the year candidate or not. Uh, similarly with Dishonored 2, uh, you will see in that video, uh, which is quite a bit longer than this one, um, <laughs> uh, me attempting to get some kind of a handle on the game so that I can make some kind of uh, assertion as to whether or not uh, it's going to be a game in my top 10 list. Um, unfortunately, neither one of these games made it in the top 10 list, spoiler, um, only because, as I said, I don't feel qualified to make that decision. Um, I probably should have revisited Dirt, Dirt Rally f way before now, uh, but again, I've been busy with other things and have not had a chance to, uh, to get back to it. Uh, as far as Dishonored 2, it just came out at too busy of a time of the year. Um, and unfortunately, with the uh, major publishers deciding everything needs to come out on Friday now, uh, I've kind of gotten to the point where uh, I'm always behind as far as receiving games. So, uh, because if you don't know, uh, at least in the Midwest, uh, the mail it practically comes to a halt over the weekend. And um, so even if your package has been uh, put into the mail, uh, your package or your letter or your, uh, you know, your bill, <laughs> if you're doing that, um, even if it's been put in the mail on Thursday, you're effectively losing two days of, um, uh, of transportation time uh, because the many times the, there's no um, inter, uh, inter post office transportation uh, until Monday then. 
So you're losing effectively two days in your um, in your uh, you know your your mail period. So therefore, <laughs> mailing something on a uh, Friday is a really really bad idea uh, if you want it to get it any time uh, soon. It's it's actually better to wait until Monday then to put it in the mail. You actually it'll actually get there faster. Uh, one of the interesting things in Dirt Rally is you get to hire crew members. Uh, unfortunately, you are capped by the amount of money that you have uh, at the time, which is not a lot of money. Um, so therefore, that kind of plays into it as well. Uh, it's a very cool idea, and I think that uh, you know further, uh, you know, with the, with further investigation and playing it more and everything else. I'm sure it will be a really cool addition to what's already a really good series. Um, this game, uh, I will say, is a callback to Dirt 1 uh, in many, many ways. Uh, the major way is that it is a very serious uh, rally, um, rally game. It is not... Uh, you know, there's no Jim Khanna, there's no, uh, you know, the, there aren't, uh, you know, funny vehicles that you can drive on dirt surfaces and weird races and stuff like that. And all that stuff is really fun. I mean, uh, Showdown may be a lower point in the game, in the series, but it still had some good ideas and it was kind of fun. Dirt 3, definitely the high point of the series, probably the highest point of the series, uh, had a really a wide array of different uh uh, challenging races and stuff that you could take part in uh, much different than a lot of other games at the time and especially a lot of games now I mean uh, you don't really find uh, that kind of diversity in one title anymore uh, unless you're talking about something like uh, Forza Horizon or um, to some degree Gran Turismo uh, although we haven't had a Gran Turismo in quite some time now uh, looking forward to Gran Turismo Sport next year, obviously. Um, assumably that whole delay that they had for it was to uh, better, uh, you know, integrate the, the PlayStation VR and PlayStation, Plus, uh, PlayStation 4 uh, support, uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, excuse me, support, uh, which they probably did not want to just, uh, you know, uh, uh, sh shoehorn in, in there. Uh, this is a, se a second stage of a hill climb that I had started um, the other day uh, before this recording uh, and it wanted me to finish it before I uh, got into the rally cross. Um, and this is uh, the, the car is already damaged <laughs> so I tried to fix it as best that I could as, as, as much as the time would allow but I was already so behind uh, in the in the race that I decided to just give it a shot and obviously that was the wrong move uh, because the steering was so terrible that uh, it was practically undrivable and I just got a penalty there for running into some fans uh, which obviously is a very big uh, departure from most driving games uh, where the fans don't even hardly exist you know it's like they're just they're just uh, they're just uh, models with no collision you know al along the side of the road so uh, they're really um, they're really making it a lot more real this game is a lot more realistic than um, than maybe is comfortable for most people I uh, I enjoy uh, some realism, but uh, I do also enjoy, you know, uh, just a, a lighthearted, fun racing game, uh, which this isn't. This is a very serious, you are paying attention at all times, you are, you know, in control at all times kind of racing game, um, which is cool. I mean, th there aren't a lot of those out there anymore. Uh, even Forza Motorsport 6 is not really a, that kind of game. Uh, for better or for worse. Um, so again, uh, that's pretty cool. I don't have any problem with that, but definitely it's not something you can just hop into and, and try out. Um, 
I think this car is a, is a really higher level car that I can probably deal with at this point. I think I just picked it because I thought it would be cool. Um, and I love Hill Climb. I mean, Hill Climb was one of my favorite events in previous dirts. Uh, so definitely it was something that I was excited to see and definitely excited to try. Um, unfortunately, uh, I guess I have a lot of uh, adjustments to make uh, in my, um, not only in my driving, but also in my, uh, in my uh, strategy with fixing the car and things like that. Um, I believe I at some point here I just retire out of the uh, out of the race because it's like futile, you know. It's like God, I'm gonna just, <coughs> you know, I'm just gonna destroy this car eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think this is where I do it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of give a um, kind of give an overview of, of what this is and why I'm doing it and all this other stuff and that's and that's that's uh, hopefully what I've done here um, recording this the day after the game awards uh, I hope everybody uh, took a little just took some time out and watched them um, I know that the game awards are not probably the best uh, best piece of entertainment out there <laughs> um, I think um, I think Jeff Keighley does a really good job. He, he does definitely, uh, he does a lot of work uh, to get that show together. Uh, I think some of the things that um, have been constants for that show are maybe things that we need to see go away, um, like the musical performances, for instance. Uh, I don't mind musical performances. Uh, I usually... Um, especially live performances a lot of times uh, they can be really cool and interesting I definitely enjoy them on Saturday Night Live um, most of the time uh, but I think it's such a subjective thing that to pick music for an event like that must be very difficult because you're looking at a wide array of age groups and uh, demographics and, and, and all kinds of different things uh, when you're uh, when you're doing that and I think sometimes you know that can be an issue uh, this rally cross race I want to call your attention to the fact that there is a uh, I'm only doing the final event the final leg of the rally cross and there is this joker lap this uh, the outer ring lap there that you see and according to the rules you have to do that lap once uh, in order to complete the race. Otherwise, you get a penalty, uh, and I'm assuming it's a very severe penalty. I don't know. I didn't get to that. I didn't. That didn't happen. Uh, the reason why it's such a big deal is that that Joker lap has a strange, uh, has an odd turn in it uh, that keeps you. That is that makes it very difficult for you to get back onto the regular track. So, therefore, uh, you end up quite a bit behind. So, it's like pitting, uh, for instance. The problem is, is that that takes a lot of strategy. And also, it takes uh, somewhat <laughs> uh, a better um, familiarity with your car than I had. Uh, I definitely was making adjustments on the fly as far as, you know, how fast could this car go, how you know, how much traction did I really have, and things like that. So, uh, I kind of messed up, and uh, I definitely had a lot of <laughs> little problems like this. Um, there is a rewind feature in this game, uh, but I don't ever use rewind um, unless I absolutely have to. Unless there's like, you know, if I was uh, racing in a, uh, a career race, uh, where the results would influence whether or not I could move on uh, and I made a mistake you know like on the third lap and see how how strange it is here <laughs> um, if you uh, if I made a, a mistake on like the third lap and it was gonna cost me being able to move on I definitely would use the rewind but uh, in general if I'm just uh, you know if I'm just in a bad place and I make a mistake uh, I just kind of take it you know, and, and don't worry about it. So, um, 
so that that's that's why I'm not using a whole bunch of rewinds, uh, which maybe I should have because you know the damage model is such that uh, it's really uh, it's really uh, severe uh, in this game. Uh, so we're getting down towards the end uh, of this video, and uh, I hope you guys had an enjoyable time. Uh, I know that I did not have uh, the greatest of performance in any of these games. I mean, in any of these uh, these areas. Uh, but I hope it gives you somewhat of an idea of what the game is like, and um, hopefully my commentary illustrated how uh, demanding this game is, and uh, how unfortunately with the small amount of time that I had to uh, check it out, I was not able to make a determination whether or not this was game of the year material or not. It doesn't mean that it isn't. It just means that I would I don't know. You know, I'm not qualified to tell you. Uh, I think it's a good. It seems like a good game. It seems like a very lovingly crafted game. But as far as uh, you know, as far as anything else, can't can't speak to it. But hopefully, I will play more of it, and I will be able to uh, maybe chime in on that sometime next year. Uh, anyway, so I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up because it does really help. And if you want to see more videos on all kinds of different uh, video games that are uh, came out this year and came out in past years, uh, better make sure to subscribe uh, so you'll be the first one to know when all these videos come up. And as always, in the description, there will be a link to the Hades Times website where we always have way more content, and also we have the number one trailer, in my mind anyway, from uh, last night's Game Awards, uh, Death Stranding. Incredible trailer. Um, I cannot wait to see what Kojima does with this game. And quite frankly, I don't care what the actual gameplay of the game is. The world just looks so amazing, and it looks so um, interesting and different that uh, that could be enough for me. So we will see. Hope you're having a good day. And uh, I'll talk to you awesome people later. And as I said before, we're going to have a lot of content coming out, so watch for that. So uh, see you later, people.